All right. Okay, everybody. Let's uh, play some bit of chill out music so I get my stuff together. Just uh, chill from it. We wait for some more people to turn up in the space. <clears throat> Hope everyone's having a fantastic end. Hey, Bob. Bob, what's happening, man? <clears throat> Thanks for dropping in. So feel free to come up and chill if you're able to. Start playing a bit of chill out music so we wait for everyone else to turn up. But I'll tell you what, it has been a traumatic couple of days. We've had so much happening in the space. I've had so much happening in my own life. It's just been crazy. Absolutely insane. <clears throat> but I hope all good with you, mate. You know you're um, scoring all those, uh, those comics and going nuts in the market like everyone else. So good for you. <clears throat> but yeah, just on the subject of comics, I just don't know where to look anymore. There's just like, oh my God, there's like so many. Hey, someone, someone mentioned comics in here. Comes Mr. Severs. <laughs> anyway, Chris, thanks for dropping in, mate. So feel free to come on and talk if you're able to. Hey, here we go. Right, let me turn off my intro music. Let me turn that off. Da, 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 approved. <clears throat> hey, Chris. There we go. Can you hear me, Alex? Hey, mate. Yeah, got you. How are you? Good, good. Hey, I'm just pouring a coffee. I'm going to go on mute and I'll be back in two minutes. Yeah, mate, yeah, go for it. Well, I suppose in, in the meantime, we might as well get into some intro music then. We'll wait for our, well, my co-host Josh to turn up. So let's, uh, let's get in. Sounds good. Do it. Sounds good. All right. Okay, everybody. Osmond Collect 63 here again, and we're back. We're back with Webby Weekends. So I hope everyone's having a fantastic weekend. Uh, we're up to episode 23. So I just have uh, powering along through these uh, these weekend episodes. And, and uh, I tell you what, it has been a hell of a weekend. So we've had all sorts of things happening in this VD space, in a crypto space. Even in my own life, I've had all, all sorts of crazy things happening. But um, right now, um, it's just, just me uh, being a uh, your, your trusty host, but I do believe my co-host uh, Josh from Collectors on Digital will be with us. I just not sure when, but uh, until then, you've, uh, you've got me. Uh, but that's all good. But um, right now, I see uh, we have Chris Severs in the house, and we've got Evolve listening in the background. But um, Chris is up the stage first. So, Chris, how are you, mate? I'm good, Alex. How you been? I'm not too bad. So, re recovering. <laughs> Covering. I, was, I was actually really, really sick on Friday. <laughs> hey, I don't know if you've... Uh, I've got a really scratchy connection here. I, I'm going to just turn off and then come back in. I don't, if, if my, my audio is playing up... Again, hang on, let me try this. I don't know if it's me or you. Is that any better? Yeah, how do I sound? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, now? yeah, I I can hear it. There is better. Yeah, sound good. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, way this thing always this thing always plays up my audio from time to time. But it's, it's all good as long as I know about it, I can do do something about it. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Might as well get that out of the way early. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> just get it before the. That means like, that means I just do this amazing like intro and spiel, and it probably sounded like crap. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, oh, so you're a little later your time. We're uh, one thirty here in Vancouver. Yeah, I know it's it's, it's the time zones because all, all all the clock, clocks changed the other day. Like you know, as uh, as Double Quill put, pointed out in her latest blog, um, yeah, it's just um completely like <laughs> stuffed like stuffed everything for just for the next uh I think the next week or so because our clocks over here in the UK they change on the thirty first. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Wow, that was a perfect blog. Perfect timing by her. It was, yeah. I fin I just finished reading it, and um, I highly encourage everyone to go check it out. I believe it. We're up to Adventures in VV number forty six, which is daylight daylight spending's time. And um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely with her. Like you know, it's like is it spending time in this space is kind of like gaming. Like you know, you you spend just go in there like you know for for like you know a few a few minutes, and it turns into like six hours later, and like in the middle of night, and just going, I, I think I need help. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I read that one comment, and uh, she said, "Oh yeah, you know, gonna plan to do Thursday all this work, and then Thursday comes and goes." And I was the exact same at my office. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was, uh, like, like, 
like I said, I was like that in my gaming days. Like, you know, you go down and sit down and play something for like 10 minutes and you like look at your clock and like 10 hours have passed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, where'd it go? <laughs> so. uh, but Chris, how, how have have you been doing with the uh, with, with the latest developments on the in in the VV market? Like you know, I was like I was saying before, my God, have we just been absolutely slammed with comics? Yeah, it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, it's kind of like when I was oh boy, I don't know, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen years old, taking the bus downtown to go to the the big comic shop. I've written about that place a few times in those blogs, but. Uh, yeah, and just you get down there, and you're just in a sea of thousands mm. of comics and thousands of covers and titles, and it's kind of why I've always liked Vivi, just scrolling through everything and seeing how great everything looks. And of course, yep. here's now all this new stuff. It's like I know, just like holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a tidal wave. I think hit us all kind of yeah, unexpected, I mean, like, I, I, right? And so. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, it's it is good. I mean, like it's, it's sort of like you know, slam the market a little bit. Like everyone's kind of like like in like the aftershock mode at the moment. But um, I mean, it's, it's definitely good, good, good for the platform, good for the company. I mean, like you know, I, I got to hand it to them. Like now, what we've, we've we've had FA music, we've had FA sports, and now we've got like you know this this partnership going on with Marvel. I mean, like wow. I mean, like they're just absolutely tear, tearing it up. This is such a big deal. I I think a lot of people that maybe aren't familiar with the space or the comic collecting industry might might not have that depth but boy um this is this is marvel patting vv on the back saying you guys have accomplished what you set out to do we're behind you um what can we do mm. you know that's that's kind of how i see this and so it's uh it's rewarding in a way right we've been in here some of us uh shorter you know Guys like us, you know, I'm like I'm almost three years now, right? Saying the same thing I was saying three years ago, right? I'm bullish. I uh, I believe in this company and this brand, but I'm I'm here for the long term, right? I was never in this for short term. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's it's for me, it's the it's the eight to ten year cycle kind of thing, right? I'm so these are just uh, fantastic milestones that keep happening over and over and over. I mean. Fud it all you want. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it's it's, it's here. I get the fud, and I think that's the fun part. Right? Yeah, I know. I've I've seen like some of like you know the the, the comments on uh, on X. So I know some people are still like you know saying fudding the the project I means like how much more like do you need? Like you know they 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 basically like solidify themselves. Like they're basically like like they said they want to be the Walmart of like you know comic books and stuff like that. And now they're actually like actually posed to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the proof is kind of there now, right? It's uh, it's getting hard to ignore. I, I think on a even a global scale. I, mean, I was watching. Um, Randy had a really good uh, YouTube stream. Uh, I was watching it today when I was on the treadmill. So I don't know if it was last night or this morning. He put it out. Yeah. It was just a little twenty minute one he did, but he got into some of that, and it's like you know the the issue about Omi you know, and the token and are these, you know, these two different companies doing two different things. Why can't we use Omi already to buy this type of stuff? Yeah. These are, again, for me, these are stepping stones, right? I, if you want to be a global market and you've got most of the globe unsure of how to buy crypto, even if it's a legitimate system, why would you lead with that? Trying to get traditional or physical collectors into a space. Right, right now you're grappling with the issue of, are these real comics? Am I getting the same value yeah, yeah. of buying this digital piece that I am with the physical one that I'm holding in my hands? It's up on my wall. Um, you've got to, you got to go slow. I, you know, I, anyone out there that thinks you got to sprint, I, I'm sorry. I, thirty years of being in business, the sprinters tire out quick. Yeah. Right. It's, it's so, that tortoise that creeps in and like now he takes everyone out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. basically, you yeah. Know, it's, these classic stories are there for a reason. They're classics because they were pretty much right, you know. And uh, yeah, you can try and buck that and make quick gains and fast money. And uh, you know, I mean, we always hear the great stories. Slumdoge millionaire, right? He yeah. just made his million back. That's right. 
you don't hear that he lost the million. <laughs> it took him three, four years, right, to build that all back up again. Yeah, that's right. But uh, we only hear the good. That's where you really got to take a step back in social media yeah. and just remember, right, there's there's an iceberg that's floating under the surface that you don't see. And so, but I, I just, I look at all this stuff as incredibly positive. I'm, uh, you know, it's rewarding. Like I said, I'm happy to be here. I know I watched uh, Aaron's, you know, channel and these top 20 covers. I mean, he's just thrilled. This is thrilling for comic book people. Oh, absolutely. Right. So uh, it's, it's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. So I'm, I like it. No, oh, great. And also, like you know, I've just know, we've also got uh, collectors gone digital. Josh has finally uh, managed to make it. Say, so, how are you, mate? Also, I see um, he, he, he he's not listening in the background as well. I see Sven, so Ochin, uh, J Met 8 I see you as well, mate. Thanks for dropping in and um, listening in. I did see Key Collecting ninety eight as well, but obviously he's had to shoot off. But yeah, how's how's it going, guys? So there's been a lot happening. <laughs> I don't know where to start, to be honest. Sorry, so sorry I'm late. I got caught up on the phone. That's all good, mate. All good. So you, you made it. That's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, what, what 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 were you talking about? I heard uh, Chris mention in the, uh, the VB Comics platform. I know. We were just basically saying, like, you know, there's been a hell of a last couple of days. We've had so much, like, dropping in the space. I, I, I honestly don't even know where to start. We've had, like, you know, we've had VB dropping FA, like, you know, music, FA sports. And now we've got like, you know, Vivi's come out and done this thing with Marvel. Like, you know, at first I thought it was just like, oh, yeah, we're just getting a fancy new, like, you know, reader. Like, you know, that's really cool. And then they come out with, oh, by the way, we're going to drop like an extra, like, what, like 300, like, new age titles on the on the app and just completely title, title wave everything. And just like, oh, crap. <laughs> I just realized I did not, I, I do not have enough money. <laughs> well, are, you, are you completely overwhelmed with the amount of there is uh, not uh, no mojo covers? But, or, uh, I mean, that's a good drop. point you bring up, Alex. I because I mean, obviously, right now we're in the uh, we're in the absolute hype phase that this just happened, and I mean, I'm I see a lot of titles that are going for some pretty astronomical prices in the market. Oh yeah, that would just ne- it would just never fly in the real world. These are these are brand new 2024 release modern ultra modern comics. Mm. And so do they go above the 499 cover retail price? <laughs> Not generally. Um, but you know, there will be some that are immediately graded. You know, there's a few titles I've grabbed that, you know, they're five, $6 on the, uh, on the mm-hmm. site and in the real world, there might only be nine or 10 of them graded and they're selling for 40 or $50. Yeah, right. But the, these are not Silver Age comics. <laughs> so the, 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 it's interesting, right? Because you're seeing the effect of the scarcity playing out uh, very quickly. And I, I also think what could be happening there as well is we've been conditioned over three years to continuously force Phoebe to drop edition sizes. And the reason for that is because there's only a small handful of us regularly participating in the app so those of us that are here already want scarcity mm. it's it's all that's why secret rares have always done quite well and whatnot um i also think there's some a little bit of hedging going on here right like should this work and should this help migrate more physical readers collectors into this space who then want those titles you know, like some of them, the, some of the uncommons I've grabbed over the past few days, there's only 200 of them in, in uh, digital. Mm-hmm. However, I haven't found, um, sometimes it's harder to find, like what is the actual print run of that comic? So if there's, you know, if there's a million printed in physical and only a thousand made in digital, you still have that debate over whether that that title in total is scarce. This is kind of where I've always played around a little bit, trying to learn more and more on this because it's why I still, I know there's 60,000 copies. I still, you know, every couple of weeks I pick up another Fantastic Four number one. I pick up another MC one. Um, They're very, very hard to come by in the real Mm. world. And so the fact that, yeah, there might be 60,000 of them in a digital format, you know, well, what if I owned 60, you know, I have 0.1% mm, of the exactly. market, but you know, that's it. If a thousand people do what I'm doing. There, there's your scarcity taken care of. Right. 
So I don't know. That's uh, it's an interesting thing that we're seeing, but I mean, some of it too, like uh, I have to admit the art is fantastic on some of these covers. Oh yeah. And so, yeah, just to have them in your collection like that. Um, uh, is it Wolverine? Is it 40 number 41 with Wolverine as uh, you know, he's in his black suit with the Canadian flag. Right. <laughs> if you're, if you're a Canadian comic collector and an X-Men fan, like you're you going to grab, grab that, that yeah. cover. It's a, it's a no brainer. Which one is it? Wolverine. <laughs> so, number four, it? I gotta look it up. I, th- I think so. Um, um it's one of the new. I don't have it right um, in front of me. Just we got uh, sleeping up on the stage as well. Sleeping, how are you, mate? You must be excited. Oh, unbelievable! <laughs> Overwhelming. I know. I was just saying. Want to, yes, want to hide under my bed? I can't. Uh, I can't get. I don't. I don't know what to do. Oh, mate! I, I was exactly the same. I was just like, holy crap! I'm just like, you know, we've got like, we got Scotty Young covers all over the place. But like, we just we've just gone from having one Peach Momoko cover to like a million Peach Momoko covers. It's just like it's just like every, everything's in shock. Yeah, but I so people, you know, I've gotten a lot of uh, DMs, which is great. You know, what am I buying? And I've actually only yeah, bought it was one. number forty-one. Yeah. I just checked. forty-one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's part of it too, right? Like for the uh, I think for the art collectors, like comic and superhero art collecting, th- this is a really big deal too. That that's why the scarcity is going to matter. And I, I think it was just brilliant that they did hold it this low, but um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. And I I kind of figured, um, you know, I've been talking to a few people that are pretty, you know, way bigger comic collectors than I am, and they all kind of say the same thing. I, you're going to see uh, yeah. a few weeks, maybe a month or so, of this playing out while everyone tries to figure out what's happening here. Um, yeah. And then you should start seeing those values back on the grails coming back again. I, I think a lot of people were we're selling and you know trying to make some positions to free up some capital to go after some of this stuff because yeah. i mean at the end of the day you you land a secret rare even if it's one of these super modern there's only 40 of them and for the most part right that's, that's right that's pretty cool that's happened over so, and over again on the platform it's been hard <laughs> 40 out of a thousand and mm. uh you know what have, what have the odds been of landing a secret rare on a vv drop yeah yeah <laughs> Just go yeah. back to what Sleeping was saying, like, yeah, I can imagine, like, all of a sudden this happens, and I can imagine your your DMs must be completely blowing up because everyone's going to be running to you, going, "What should I buy? What should I buy?" Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've had a few, had a few comments, right? But it's always the same answer. I I don't really stray too far, right? Number one, this is it's comic book collecting. This is supposed to be fun, mm. right? So go after what you like. There's a there's a handful of us that are flippers and gamblers and uh, you know they're 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 speculating for fast return, yep. but the fundamentals are always going to be the same, right? What has compelling storylines? What is going to drive popularity? Uh, what artists do people gravitate to? What are the type of covers and you know? And then if you're just collecting these because you know, maybe you like, I'm, at some point I'm going to do this. I just, I can't narrow down which ones to mm. do, but I do want to physically print out a number of my, my favorite, you know, covers, and have them framed, right. And get them up on the, on the wall to show, you know, showcase them a little bit. Um, that's going to be a big reason for this, this mm. new stuff as more and more titles are coming into play. Yeah. Definitely. But, uh, sorry, I'm um, Josh is Josh yeah. goes hand up with a question. Yeah, no, I, I just, when I came in here, I know there was some issues with the connection and stuff. I want to make sure people's mics on stage are working because I know sleeping got cut off earlier. And then is, is there like an overlay or can everybody hear each other? Um, I'm, I'm good. So is, is everyone else uh, else good? Sleeping, sleeping, you good, mate? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, mate. Yeah, no, we got you. Yeah. So sorry, you got cool. cut, cut off before. You got cut off mid sentence. <laughs> it's all good. Let, uh, like Chris keeps talking, I, I agree with 99% of what he says. Actually, it's probably wrong. I agree with 100% of what he says. <laughs> no, so, so, um, so have, have you had um, much luck pick, picking up anything lately? I actually only bought one Venom one. I was too overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. And I think I'm too old school in thinking that modern books that, you know, they just really generally don't go up in value. And so they're all too expensive for me. So instead, I spent my day 
just buying uh you know yeah Alex, sorry, number one sorry to cut in. i can't like hear anybody answering so i don't know if that's my phone but i'm gonna uh Oh, okay. I'm jump out and then try coming back. Yeah, yeah, no here, worries, mate. So. Yeah, so I'll be right yeah, back. No worries. Sorry, sleeping. Carry on. So I just went and bought, you know, a bunch of X Men ones, a bunch of Daredevil ones, a bunch of you know stuff like that because I just couldn't, I can't, I can't figure out all this modern stuff. So, uh, so I just went and bought the bought the good old Grails, mm -hmm. and I, well, I just continue to stack those like Chris was saying. I just don't think you can go wrong buying X Men one or daredevil one or you know whatever tales of suspense 39 which is the first appearance of iron man those yeah. s tier comics i feel like and i only buy the commons right i just stack the commons <laughs> you know and if you've used that stacker world it's crazy like i have uh around 39 tales of suspense 39 that's the first appearance of iron man so i thought mm -hmm. i was doing good. but if you go look at the stacker world there's there's one guy that's got like 250 of them or something like that and you just look at it, just go, ah, oh, damn. <laughs> I mean, I think it's going to pay off because, I mean, once again, we're just guessing, but they, they're selling right now between 30 and 40 uh, gems. I got to believe once, you know, we get more people and other things, some of those, you know, top tier comics are really going to, you know, minimum 100 gems. I don't even know what, what would be, what would make sense for some of those. Um, and you know, the guy who owns 250 of them is going to be a happy guy. Right. And they probably mm, would skyrocket from there, you know, because I what one thing that I always go with and people are asking for some of these values is I know they're super scarce and that's exciting, but I always go with the smell test. And at a certain point, you know, if you're paying, I'll make it up a thousand dollars, thousand U.S. dollars. I'll just mm -hmm. use U.S. the U.S. Yep. yep. For the first appearance of Iron Man. That smells right, right? In the world, you know, that just, you know, it just seems right. But you're you're paying a thousand gems for, you know, some obscure part of the different story or whatever. It it the, there's a limit, I think, of what someone will pay for that. Mm. Right now we don't quite understand. So maybe I think of it in more of a long-term sense. Now I get it. There's there's particular covers, and this happens in the real world too particular covers and particular artists that just everybody loves, right? I can think of this uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider one by Clayton Crane that there's no significance to that comic whatsoever. Um, but the but the cover is so stunning um, and really relatively scarce that I think that comic sells for around $800. Um, right. So maybe we'll see some of that um, and maybe we'll just see some of that because this is the first drop. But after we get, you know, 20 new comics a week with all their variants, I think people are going to you know, maybe take less stock in it. Now, mm -hmm. the other thing that, that people do is and I do is, you know, I want a full run. So, you know, the new miles, um, we only have seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't I can't remember what they put on. They put four or five of them on there. I'm definitely going to pick those up because of a miles. And then I need to go. I hope they'll release you know, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So we can get the full yeah. run. And that'll be that'll be super exciting. Then of course the 2019 run is the really kind of one where people thought was a really awesome one. We don't have wait, we have one of those. I think we have one of those on the app, number 10. And there's like 43 yeah. of those. So I think I do think people will collect runs. And that's when it's interesting because when there's only a thousand you know, that means only a thousand people can have that full run. And there are some people who really like Miles or Daredevil or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So that, I guess, is somewhat compelling. Mm, interesting. Mm, what about you, Josh? Have you got anything to add to that or, or Chris? No, just just what uh, Sweeper was saying. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have the comic background or anything like that, but... Uh... I haven't made any moves myself either. I, I just don't even know what to pick up yet. But um, I, I I knew that when it was announced, it wasn't like a value play or anything like that. Because I know Sleeping was just talking about how people should, um, or you were saying earlier, that uh, people should you know focus on the art and stuff like that. Um, and in terms of the art that they dropped, I, th I think it's, I mean, some of the best art that we've seen on the platform so far. So. 
Um, I don't really have much more to say there. I know Chris is uh, a lot more honest than I am, so I don't know if he has anything to add. Yeah. I mean, the art. Oh, those are good points. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sleep. I mean, the art now, if you go into all the art, it's just out of control in my mind. You go to a comic store right now, you walk in, you look at any week, and you look at the variants, and it'll, I mean, for me, it just knocks my socks off week after week. All these artists, and Marvel really pulls the best artists in the world and has them do their covers, right? And has them do their interiors, you know, from Pepe Larraz to, I mean, they're just bonkers. Clayton Crane, Peach Momo, I mean, it never yeah. ends. Their, their level of talent is insane. And then once those, um, you know, like Alex Ross, you know, once they get yeah. too big for it, they just go get more talent. It's just, it's just insane. Yeah. 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 That to me, that's also really exciting because look at the longevity of the space and you still have artists that want to come in at that level, participate that, that deeply. And it's still working. No, so, I mean, there's always these narratives that, oh, the comic industry is dead. No one's buying comics anymore. And I think it's just, it's still there. It's just people are doing different things for different reasons. But for me, when I start seeing all this new, these Daredevil titles coming out to Sleepin's Point, you know, I'm probably going to be the guy that goes back to when I was 16 years old, trying to buy up all the original runs of Daredevil and, and the Bullseye storylines and the Kingpin storylines. Um, you know, I've got my first Daredevil I've mentioned, mm -hmm. right? It yep. was Daredevil 50, 50, 54. That's the one that got me into this this whole space, right? I was 15 years old or 14. Um, when those titles eventually hit, yeah, for sure I'm going to be buying them. Because no, <laughs> why wouldn't I want to connect those original runs? And so I see this as all just sort of warming up the engine to get everybody back into this again. And Boy, like those of us that have been in this industry for this many years, and I, I always say I took what a twenty-something year hiatus because all of a sudden, you know, I graduated university, I had jobs, kids coming out, mortgages, life insurance. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All this stuff. I'm getting into that myself. <laughs> it hits you hard. It hits you really fast. Yeah. So that accumulation phase when you're young, because you don't really have those those financial uh, responsibilities. Sure, you're collecting, you're stacking. Those of us that maybe, you know, I collected and I kept all my comics. I didn't keep them with the thought that there was going to be future resale value. I kept them with the thought of, I love these so much. Why would I ever part with mm. them? It was, it was a completely different mindset than what so much of we see is happening today where I'm going to buy this comic because in six months I'm going to flip yeah. it. And right poolside and all the stuff these terms we've come up with right so it's That's a right. there's di different different narratives that are going on but yes to sleep its point i for sure i will invest to buy those original comic runs there are books that unfortunately i've never been able to complete in my physical sets because they're hard to find or they're just the titles went out you know like not everybody was a big fan of the west coast avengers i love that that run so for sure that when that hits again um yeah i'll buy that i'll buy that whole series hands down right so yeah i i was just two things the going. other day is if they come out with some of these older runs and they only have a thousand of some of these comics even though they might not even be key ones but people want to complete runs it's gonna be yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. madness yep but it's gonna be bonkers it's Bonkers. Yeah. The one I've been um, buying, buying a bunch of is uh, the Daredevil. You probably, I know, Chris, you probably bought a bunch of them too. Is the Daredevil number three that came out about a month or two yeah. ago, though. First appearance of the Owl. It's not that big of a character. But oh, whatever. yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter because yeah. the Daredevil fans are going to want the run. They only had 5,000 of them, which means there's only 3,000 commons. Yeah. And I, you know, they're selling for three bucks. So why wouldn't you buy a I uh... I'm stacking sleeping. I love that. But, you know, like I had uh, my my kids bought me the, um, not the almanac. Oh, geez, what's the word? Just went right out of my head. But, you know, it's like the synopsis of about six or seven titles in a little paperback book, right? Daredevil 1, Daredevil yeah. 2, Daredevil 3. Oh, there's the owl. Oh, look at right. just showed up on TV. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm showing this to my kids saying, listen, you guys were ahead of yourselves here. You bought me this book as a Christmas gift. And look what happened in 2024. This title dropped. 
And to your to your other points, but yeah, I am I am always big on the common cover. That is the OG cover. That is the classic. That is the history. That is everything wrapped up in a digital format. And then if I have anything available left over, sure, I'll grab. I like the uh, the rare and the uh, ultra rare because those are VV exclusive. Yep. And if I have some gems over, sure, I'll I'll try and grab a, a secret rare. But for me, the secret rare is the that's almost the gamble. To me, that's the speculative play. Like at some point down the road, I'll be able to sell that secret rare and come back and buy ten more comics. Mm. What do you say? Uh, well, what do you mean by that? What's that? Sorry? When you say gamble, what do you mean by that? A secret rare value, I think, is going to appreciate quickly because it's geared towards the scarcity uh, valuation that the crypto market likes. Right. Everything we talk about is, you know, burning this and deflationary. Yep. Um, I want less and less. I don't want anyone else to be able to have these. I want to have one to ones. That to me is a manufactured product. And so the secret rare was manufactured to meet that demand. Mm. It's just a panel from the inside of the book. They're, I'm not the best graphic artist, Josh. You're probably better at answering this. But when I had this conversation with my creative director at my office, he's like, yeah. It, that's that's you know on a comparative standpoint incredibly simple to create the secret rare slap the title on it you know make that a cover for an artist to conceptualize a new concept based on the histor the history of where that story is coming mm -hmm. from and then ma make that into a cover there's work involved in that there's planning they don't do that in 10 15 minutes right they might take a couple of weeks mm -hmm. to think about what do i want that's their brand they're putting on that cover. And so, again, that to me has a little bit of different valuation, a different reason to collect those. But that's why I say I'm, I'm a little more speculative on the, the secret rare. Uh, but they're beautiful. I, at the end of the day, I, I actually really like them. I like the simple, clean, white background. As an advertising guy, you're always talking about you know, white space. Yeah. How do I do more with less? Right. Let this let the story play out in front of the buyer, the consumer. Let them visualize what that product or brand means to yeah. them. Is that the old days of new, newspaper and yellow page mm -hmm. advertising? You tried to put every single descriptor in those ads you could, and they were horrible. They were ugly. And you know what happened? It didn't work. Because mm. <laughs> then you couldn't figure out what are you trying to tell me here. But uh, but that's kind of my thought. I'm just I I just really really love the original covers. I know. Um, I think Alex, you and I had this chat with Hinano and, and uh, Denny uh, Mazer once, yeah, right? It's like, why didn't they make the secret rare the OG cover? What would those be valued mm. at? That would, I think, that would have been a a nicer move. But but then you don't have the mass appeal yeah. of more people being able to buy in, yeah. on it, right? That's yeah. that's the big challenge. Big challenge. I, I have a quick question for you, Chris, because I know you're the marketing guy, and so I always am thinking yeah. of how do you how do we get more of the kind of quote unquote old school comic book people into, into VV and whatnot. And I have always said it's, it's going to be difficult. And I, we speculated yeah. only 5% um, are here. And, and I would bet that's that number. Maybe, you know, even maybe that's too high. I don't know. I don't think we're going to get a hundred percent, but could you get it go from 5% to 10% or 15%? That would make a huge difference, I think. But one of the things I yeah. think is key is now that we have the reader as its own mm. app, and then I think even that they've seen before because of Marvel Unlimited and other things. But the big next step in my mind is the Vision Pro and these AR goggles. Yeah. Because you could read mm -hmm. the comic, you know, larger than life. The panels are almost as big as a movie screen. Read your comic like that. Oh, my Lord. That is. Oh, yeah. That it's, is a thing that you have never been able to experience as a comic book person. Mm. And that might get some of the people to come over. That's what right. do you think about that? That's, I think you're, you're so spot on. You're so spot on. This is the, um, we're at a very pivotal point. Like I was in the, just starting my career in marketing when the internet showed up. I, you know, this is embarrassing and some of you might not even know what this is, right? But I, I sold Yellow Pages ads for a living <laughs> for about five years. And, uh, 
we were the dominant directory on the planet. If you were in the States, it was Verizon, which was the major phone mm -hmm. book, right? In Canada, we were, uh, we were the telcos that, that ran these until Verizon bought us out, right? And one day we created a website. Some of you may have even used this. It was called superpages.com. It was the world's first directory. There was no Google. There was no Yahoo search. There was nothing. And so if you wanted to find a business, you either went in your phone book or some of us had signed up for this $29.95 a month dial-up internet service, which was so bloody god-awful. You can't imagine how bad the product <laughs> was. But to those that saw the potential, you signed up for that immediately because you wanted to learn how to make it work. And then for me, it's like, well, the boy, look at all the coders and the, the, um, the uh, what do you call them, the developers and stuff that are jumping in on this. Why are they doing that? I always tend to watch where are the tech guys focused, right? What do they see that the general consumer market does not? And right now, do you know where they're all focused? They're all focused on Ethereum. They're all focused on Solana. They're all focused on blockchain. They're yeah. all focused on Web3. And they're all focused on AI and AR and all the things that are coming from this. We're probably got a seven, eight, maybe a 10 year time horizon until that becomes so ubiquitous. There was a time when it was incredibly difficult to buy a large screen TV. Yeah. With, with the concept of a flat panel TV was so foreign to us. At the time, the best TV you could get was from Sony. It was the Sony Trinitron. It came out with a flat screen because people kept talking about wanting flat screen TVs. So they built a TV with a flat screen on it. Meanwhile, behind the screen was the box yeah. that was the size of a small yeah, car. I remember that. <laughs> right? It weighed 400 pounds. They sold millions of them because of the concept of flat screen, high definition technology. Right? And so now today, harder to find you know anyone that doesn't really have a flat screen tv in their house or a big wall mount panel but you know that's the preferred uh, entertainment vehicle in the home now what's the next amplification of that it's it's not like you're going to get them any thinner really that that doesn't make too much sense anymore that's not what's important what's becoming important is sleep in's comment how do you over engage how do you amplify my experience that's what we all want exactly i think covid sh showed everybody how important it, it you know experience and all that stuff is right mm. so to me yeah that is where the focus of all this is going why would you want to rush into that I, i've heard i've had people ask me about the vv verse like why hasn't it launched yet like what's going on like what a failure of the company but no 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 failure yeah, like, do you want to launch as the next evolution of super pages? Do you want to be the phone book company that comes out with the directory that's already there and not working so well? Or do you want to kind of wait, let the technology catch up, and when you're 100% ready, jump in, launch, bring in that's the masses. Right. Like, do you do, do you want it now or do you yeah. want it right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I always see these these developments like we just saw this week is really nice small steps but steady cautious calculated i there is a strategy and an end goal at play here mm. that uh, most of us don't even comprehend yet because how could we we haven't experienced the product although this exactly. was an engineer at sony like a really big step this is this is a big step, yeah, right, moving forward. But I, I look at it like, where was the engineer at Sony that came up with the idea? Like, we have to take this this Toyota sized TV and turn it into something like a a duo tang. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's build that out. Yeah, right? yeah. And it took years. It took years to do that. Yeah. So, sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Josh. Go on. I was just about to say you, you've you've had your hand up very patiently, mate. Do you want to jump in with your question? <laughs> All right, it's all good. It's all good. Good conversation. Yeah. Um, no, I just I I want to go back to Sleepin's point because I I I have a difference of opinion with the whole Apple Vision Pro. I, I think a lot of what was just discussed there, like um, adding more uh, kind of features for for current users, do all more use cases. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, the only thing in my eyes with that is that that caters to only people who know about V. So if you want to bring more people onto the platform, 
it's doing things like what they just did with introducing the TV comics thing um, and, and, and simplifying uh, or, or they need to provide more education and simplifying the process. And, and, and that's the type of stuff that's going to get more people in. Mm. Um, I think with regards to the Apple Vision Pro, we've already seen it where, you know, it got released, hyped up and hype dies down. Hype dies down because of the price point. People can't buy it. And then the uh, lack of apps in the app store. So we need price to go down. We need more apps in the app store for more people to buy it so that we get to that point where, you know, those kids go over to a friend's house, they see the Apple Vision Pro, they go back home and go, mom, can we get one? Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. I was going to say, you're, you, you're spot on on this because you're describing when my dad brought home my Atari 2600. Right. This was, I, when did that come out? Like night, I don't even remember, 79, 80, early 80s. Yeah. I was the first kid on our block to have an Atari 2600, right? It had a joystick with one button. And it was so simple that anyone could use it. Anyone could figure it out and learn it really quick. But it was $500. Mm. Now that was $500 back in like 1980, which would be, I don't know, a couple grand today. Yeah. So it wasn't affordable for most. So yes, all the all my buddies were coming over, hanging out at my house, and what some of them would end up doing was go and buy their own game cartridges, which were fifty bucks back yeah. then, and bring them yeah, over your house. because they could, yeah, they could afford the fifty bucks. They couldn't afford the console, and so we would start to share until the price of the console came down because demand was suddenly there. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Big screen TVs came out; they were ten, twelve thousand dollars. Right? How many of those were selling? And then now, I go into Walmart. They're like, you know, third three hundred bucks. <laughs> so and, a, and just to finish my point too, because the price is just the one side. Like yeah. we've already seen this happen with VV cycles, where something super big or an IP, uh, like a large IP, is announced with the um, VV platform. People mm -hmm. get excited. Chris was talking about it earlier how people sell off and prepare for the drop, so they have gems. Yeah. And then things go back to normal. Right. Yeah. It's the exact same thing where if they were to release compatibility with the Vision Pro right now, so people who know about VV can read the the, the comics in, in AR or VR, then what's gonna happen is our user base is gonna get super excited. Woohoo, we can do it, but then a matter of weeks are gonna go by and then they're gonna go, Okay, what's next? Right. Yeah. So the team has to be in a position where they can do that, but then a few weeks later they release another feature and another yeah. one. And another one, and another one, and it's like they build that momentum like they were doing throughout this whole entire week, right? We've had yeah. an incredible, so they just need to keep yeah. doing that over yeah. a longer period of time. Yeah, it's like the it's yeah. it's like the, uh, the 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 shiny item syndrome. <laughs> it's yeah, like, and, and oh, it's yeah. like oh, shiny! It's like this is awesome. Okay, now I'm bored. Oh, next shiny thing. Woo! Like, and I know. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Uh, I know. I know. Stephen tied his uh his hand up. So. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I was about to say. We'll we'll we'll, we'll go to sleep and, and then we'll and then we'll go to Mask because Mask has been sitting very patiently in the background. So how how are you, Mask? I I I haven't first. seen you. Let Mask okay. go first, and then I'll I'll jump in. All right, no worries. So Mask, how are you, mate? Hey, how you guys doing? How's everybody good, good, here? mate. We're excited. We're over the moon. <laughs> it's all been happening. Oh, definitely, man. A lot of excitement. I, I was gonna ask one thing, especially uh, to Chris and and Sleeping as well, and everybody that's up here in the panel is because one of the questions that Sleepin said or somebody said was how do we bring in uh more users right with the new mm. what we have new right how do we advertise how do we get more yeah and, and the thing is that the brilliance of this vv uh comic app and the way they did it was that your you, one half is the nft side the other half is replacing what comicsology used to be and that's what I said in other spaces is basically comicsology was bringing in 19 million in digital money. <laughs> and these people, they were buying okay. these comics. They didn't care that you couldn't sell it because in their own mind, they thought they owned it. Just like Kindle. That's when you buy a book on Kindle, right, it goes right. in your library and you feel that you own it. That's the people that we want to come in. We're giving them that same thing. And then if they want to go and chase uh, a variant cover, if they want to go buy the nft they can just pay the difference of that regular comic and mint it if, if it's available mm. of course yeah, so yeah. It, it's brilliant because you're bringing those anti-nft people that are already in digital because that's who you want to get you want to get people that's already in the digital space because i'm in several uh 
omnibus groups. And, you know, your omnibus is your collected editions. It's your yep. one through 30 runs. And these guys are selling off. I see more and more people when they start selling off their collection and then buying the digital version of it on Amazon because it's cheaper. Mm. They're buying it for 30. They're buying it for $40 on Amazon. Yeah. It goes into their Kindle device and yep. they have their omnibus. That's so right. When Cheap. You, when you, Mm -hmm. I was going to say cheaper and more, and, 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 and more convenient. Exactly. So when you look at the, uh, on the app, you will find that there's a drop down that shows uh, novels, right? And when you go to yes. the frequently asked questions, that says, it states what the novel is. And it says that it's collected editions, is a series of runs, meaning one through whatever, like an omnibus, like a, like a collected, like like a uh, fuck, I can't even remember, think of the other names. <laughs> like a Marvel masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, but when you read it, it also says that these will not be limited. Man, and math. these will not be able to be. Let me interrupt you for a second. Tell everybody what an omnibus is, because they may not know. Yeah, the omnibus is basically an example. Is you have Amazing Spider-Man, and it has about six, seven uh, different volumes, if not more. And the first volume of that omnibus would be your very first appearance of Spider-Man, which is your AF-15, and then the first 30 issues of Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 30 is in that omnibus. And then that's volume one. Volume two would be issues 31 through 60. And then so on and so on until all the volumes are out. So basically, it's, it's your entire... And then now on the newer comics, because you see the new runs, they're only 1 through 35. Uh, omnibus is the whole run now in today's world. So instead of buying the comic one by one at the comic book store, some people would just not buy the yep. comic and wait for the omnibus to come out so they can buy the whole thing and read it at their own pleasure. Let me let me jump in one second on the omnibus too. Is there sometimes yeah, go for it. the full story? So what they do with a lot of modern comics, which is crazy. So I mean, I'm trying to think of one. You know, like the King in Black. The King in Black is like issues like one through I think six, which is big thing where they fought everybody fought Noel. But there was so many other comics, you know, Extreme Venom over here, whatever. These four yeah, yeah, yeah. over in Web of Web, of, you know, there was stuff going on in the miles. So it, if you want to read the whole story, it's so confusing. People don't even know. You got to go buy a Captain America. You, I think there's actually part of the story in Guardians of the Galaxy. So mm. the the omnibus in the right chronological order has all these different comics, so you could read the King yeah. in Black. And it goes and gets from all these other other ones. Sorry, keep going, Mask. No, no I was I was gonna say like a, a a good um a good sort of like an, um way of describing it is like uh, watching all the uh the the Marvel cinematic movies in order is more or less that's that's more or less what what an omnibus is. It takes everything and sort of cr puts it in one chronological order, so that way you can start start to finish and know exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah. they map it out. Yeah, I just for anyone interested, I just took a photo and put a couple of my omnibuses into the, uh, into the chat Ooh. section. If you want to, if you want to see what these are looking like. So I've got it for like the, you know, the first uh, nine daredevils and fantastic four, number one, Th this is what I was talking about earlier that my uh, okay, kids cool, were cool. putting in my stockings. Oh yeah. Christmas, right? Yeah. There's a couple of familiar, familiar um, titles there. I can see. Yeah. Yeah. Like not everyone can go and, find their local comic book store and say, hi, I'd like to buy the first, uh, you know, nine or 10 issues of daredevil. Number one, please. Right? Oh, you have four or $5 million laying around. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> of so, course you can, sir, yeah. but this handsome price of yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> what well, step right That's up. <laughs> and so, yeah, so these are a really nice way that, uh, again, this is another product that Mar uh, Marvel sells, um, that, keeps comic book readers enthused engaged and then what happened right now for some reason you, you know daredevil number one on the vv app the uh, common is under uh is it under 15 dollars well, i can i can tell I, you I, right now if you want i was buy, i bought some for, yeah. for ten dollars so yeah they're they're way yeah i grabbing these up like crazy i and i got so fortunate the other day i think alex i showed you right you did, somebody yeah. dropped uh Edition number six four zero one uh, for like twelve bucks. I, what? I know. <laughs> like, just look at 
look at the cover that you're dropping. Those dates are actually listed on there from Vivi. And so I was like, okay, well, I better yeah, pick yeah. that one up. I'm a bit of a daredevil. Well, here we go. <laughs> is, is a little mark for you. So right now, Dar- currently, Daredevil number one, the common, is currently going for eight gems and 50 frags on the floor. My God. Right, that's almost back to to retail list. But again, it it explains what's happening from a a consumer psychology standpoint. Okay, that common has uh, that's a thirty thousand k drop, so it's not VV scarce. It it is more in the real world. It's hard to find those grades above nine point two, nine point four mm. in any realm of most people's affordability. Um, I think uh, it was a common crypto said, you know, if, if, if a nine, eight sold on that today, it'd probably go over half a mm. million dollars. Exactly. That's a we We call that a grail and the grails are selling for eight dollars while everybody's trying to get into the brand new drop, which I get, you know, it has value too, right? Don't, don't forget this is the, I mean, is it technical or theoretical on this one? I'm about to say this is another VV first right this is the first time they partnered with marvel to drop modern age comics in this format so to me th- that's a bit of the the fun speculation mm-hmm. right hey i'm grabbing titles and covers that i like but i'm also contributing to this new thing that they just did that helps marvel realize hey this was a good decision getting involved with this company we took a hell of a chance right because ultimately if it failed that's partly Marvel failing as well. I, I've said this since day one. VV is not going to try and rug you because that makes Disney look bad. That's it. That makes Marvel look bad. That makes Universal look bad. <laughs> and you bad. don't want Disney you know? look bad. <laughs> you don't want to yeah, upset the these, mouse. These aren't brands that are really in the business of taking huge kind of risks with the marketplace. I, so I... Um, I look at it that way too, right? And this is a bit of another fun one. But that's the, to uh, Maz's point. Those omnibuses are great, but yeah, now all of a sudden, what if I could, you know, sell one, make ten, fifteen dollars, and be able to go back into Vivi and buy a Daredevil one for eight bucks? That's, you know, and I think this is. I, was it, Maz? Did you say this? Like, how are you trying to get more uh, people using the app? I don't think we have a problem really presenting this story to the crypto audience, which in itself is relatively new in the history of time and all that kind of stuff. But people tend to get digital ownership. Mm. Someone like me in my 50s, I've worked in digital media now for over 20-something years. I have zero problem with understanding digital ownership and the power and potential of this space. I just, I'm in it. So I get it. But there are a heck of a lot of people that are not, that don't, that still don't buy. Why, why do you think there's still Bitcoin on open exchanges? That should have sold out years ago. Why would you ever sell your Bitcoin? Right? But it's still for sale. Mm. Because a lot of people are playing the gamble. They're playing the, hey, I just made 10x. I'm going to sell. Wait for it to come down. Rinse, yep. repeat. Right? That's never going to change. But uh, how you how you have to get a comic book reader into this app. I think what Vivi and Marvel just did is, is right. I think you have to appeal to people that are used to reading their comic books on Marvel unlimited or their omnibus readers, or they're just go and they buy comic books for the sake of fun reading. But somewhere, somewhere along the line, somehow along the line, someone says to them, Hey, but you know what? Yeah. Rather than just paying a subscription, and being able to read titles all day long, fill your boots. What if you could actually read it and own it? Yeah. And kind of like Bitcoin, lock it up and it's yours. Mm. And I think you can't just do that. You can't say to somebody, hey, come into VV and buy gems. They're going to be like, what the hell's a gem? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, so now I got to, you're back into the, Oh, I yeah. have to convert fiat like, into crypto. Oh, now I have to learn something new. Come on, I'm lazy. I want it, it easy, it, that sort of thing. Right, exactly. And so this is that, I, I keep saying, Vivi has continuously replicated how to do easy. And this is another way. It's like, okay, I'm already reading this. Oh, I'm already used to paying $3.99 for a new comic, 
um, you know, just to have into my, my stack or whatnot. I can never resell it. I can just read it and then throw it away or whatever I'm going to do with it. But, oh, what's this option? You can own mm. it? Oh, hey, I like uh, this artist. I like Peace Momoko covers. Or I love Scotty Young. What's, what's this? He did an exclusive cover for Vivi? And I can pay $7.99 for a chance to win it? Hold on mm. a second here. What's going on? And that's where people are going to start asking questions. And it goes back to Sleepin's point. What if that means we just get 5% more new users because they, they kind of understand how that works? And this isn't that much harder to understand. Now you're just buying it like you go into a local comic book store and buy that product and take it home and you own it and you put it in your long box or wherever you want to store it, but you know you own it. That, that's you've got you've got to be simple in that transition but, and that's how you'll Chris, get more of the what is your idea of digital ownership do you consider people that buy books on kindle owning their books even though they may consider that it's it's interesting that's a great mm. question i consider it truly can i now resell it right but to them, at a loss they feel at they own it, correct uh, if I said to my wife, how does she feel? I'm thinking about her because she's got a, a reader. She down, she spends money and she downloads books all the time. There is nothing in why she does that, that there's an expectation she's ever going to resell it. She's happy to use the product. So just like anything, I buy a tank of gas in my car. My value is that I can keep my car moving, mm. right? I, I'm, I'm buying it to, to use it. Um, and then it has a, a burnout, right? Eventually the tank runs out. I got to fill, fill it. Eventually the book is read. I got to buy a new one. Um, so there is ownership. I think different levels yeah. of ownership. This is more probably ownership to a, an investment level, right? I, I'd love to see a poll of, you know, those of us yeah. in BV, how many of us have bought these things to both enjoy them, but down the road think, ah, oh, there's a bit of a chance here. Mm -hmm. um, this I, could go somewhere. Right. Just to go back to Master's question about like, you know, the ownership, like, you know, the ownership, like, I suppose it sort of comes back down, like, you know, to like the individual, about how like the individual feels about it. As like, uh, oh, I had it in my head. Like, um, it's, it's only as valuable as what the individual places on it. Yeah. Something like that, like you know, if 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 I like, say, for example, like you're saying the Kindle example, like if if it's in my Kindle and I feel like I own it, then that gives it value to me. But if I have it in my ledger wallet, and I know that no matter what happens, as long as I don't lose my seed phrase, I'm okay. That that was me as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe it's like in that sort of sense. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the comment the comment that Chris made about walking into a comic book store and then just taking it home and it being the equivalent of that. Is exactly why VV Comics is going to work, though, is because and why it's so genius is because, I mean, I don't even have a comic background, but if you what what they're doing is they're presenting the offer, which is something mm. that the that the, 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 the person already wants. You're, they're not going hey, buy an mm. NFT, which you know some of these comic heads might not even want to do, right? Then what what, yeah. what they're doing is they're presenting the comic. And then at the end, they're presenting an upsell to, to the offer they already exactly. want to buy, and the offer makes or, or the the upsell makes that offer way better. So that's why that, that it, it it works so well is they're not mm. even explaining anything around NFTs, yeah. right? So but, the movie, the movie, I, I yeah. yeah, it's the same thing as signing up to the main app where you can just put your credit card in and you don't even necessarily know you're buying an NFT that's on the blockchain. It's the same thing with this where exactly. you don't necessarily know that that comic is on the blockchain, but the idea of owning it is what you is, is what you buy into yeah and also as well like correct correct me if i'm wrong as well but isn't there an option that like say you buy it but then you resell it but then there's also you also get a redemption code that you can still view that comic on marvel unlimited is that correct yeah yeah how cool yeah i was like so, so literally so what like there's no <laughs> there's no real risk like you know i can still sell my comic but i can still read it yeah it's a one-time yeah, you know, i think it's a one-time yeah. yeah it's, it's one, one time, time is it okay right right what are you saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, what a great thing, right? Because sometimes, like, I, I still have VV titles that, you know, I minted and have not opened. And I, I remember having a, a chat with, I think it was Sean and, and Spencer at Comics and Crypto. Like, what do you guys think about this? Because, you know, if I could manufacture Marvel Comics number one, right, come right off the printer, put it directly into a slab and, it never sees the light of day, right? That there's some value in that. 
when you go and buy a, a one of one, you know, piece of art directly from the artist, the painter, whatever, mm. you're the original owner. No one else has ever touched it, seen it. There, there's people that spend incredible premiums on that. And so some of the stuff that I've, you know, minted, you know, immediately, I'm not opening up. Those aren't the ones I read. If I get, like, I've got some, like some 1939 palindromes, right, on, on Marvel Comics number yeah. one. I'm not going to touch those. But I'll buy, you know, maybe a random yeah. edition number just, just to, to read that one. Yeah. So that that kind of knowledge, I think, is still, we're, we're way out. Like, what's going to happen with all these types of things? But I think that's why, to your point, Josh, this makes so much sense. Because the people that already just read for the sake of reading and enjoy it, I think of how few people in the VV ecosystem understand the importance of edition numbers. The, the herd is after low mm. min. And why is that? It's because VV gave a 5% credit, a premium, if you had a 5% you know, low edition. That's number. right, yeah. And they're great. They're great in the in the real world. If you've got like one of the first ten that come, you know, hot off the press, right? There's terminology that dictate that. There are collectors that collect, you know, sub one hundreds and sub fifties and sub tens. Um, but you've got a very small percentage of the user base right now that understands the importance of, you know, what 1963 means for mm. Spider Man, what 1964 means for Daredevil, what 1939 means to the entire Marvel space. There's a very small percentage of that, right? But there's a very large percentage of people in the app, enjoying the app. And you're going to have the exact same thing now with Marvel readers, traditional readers. But again, think of the size of that audience that have absolutely no concept what an addition number is on a VV mm -hmm. asset. So I look at that as if that happens, right? There's a really fun way to get in early and lock those pieces up. When you go in the market, right, you don't really see a lot of those key edition numbers for sale. And when you do, they're usually 5, 10x the floor. And then people don't understand why. This has always been a limitation, I think, that Vivi needs to correct. There's no way to know why somebody has something listed at the price they do unless you happen to see it in the feed or you happen to come across it in a you know a social post, which I think a lot of people are hesitant to do because it looks like you're just trying to, you know, you're trying to shill your asset up a little bit. But Facebook Marketplace allows you to put ten photos in a full description and yeah, titles yeah. and categories, right? Help me understand why you've priced this, and if I can see that value too, because uh, I think that's that's something that we need. But and that'll help with education and this goes right back to sleeping and josh's points right again onboarding it this is an education phase we're in it's all it is we just have to calmly collectively and clearly present why there's value here to somebody that is going to be skeptical and it frankly terrified that you're about to devalue Right. What if you just went to Heritage Auctions and paid a million and a half dollars for a nine six Fantastic Four number one, and suddenly somebody comes out and says, "Well, you could just bought that on V thirty bucks." <laughs> You'd be like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a what a what is going on?" Moment. My thinking, my take on that. And I don't know what you, what you think, sleeping, but I think that's only going to make that physical book more valuable. Because as they age, they're getting older, they're getting more and more scarce, many more are being lost. You know, someone's basement catches fire and their long box is destroyed, it, right? And they had two or three copies, they're gone, right? So I, I don't know. That's uh, an interesting mm -hmm. thing I think we'll see in the next few years, but... Uh, yeah, definitely. And Matt, uh, Matt, was it Max, right? Yeah, I was going to say, like, the, well, I have my. So, sorry, sleeping had to step down, but um, I think sleep, sleeping had a, a question as well. But if you're able to, please, please come back. Um, also as well, I'll just quick, quickly jump in as well. If um, if anybody out, out there listening in the background wants to come up and speak and say a few words, you're more than welcome to do so. And also, a big thank you for everybody who's taking the time to to, to tune in and listen. Listen, I, I do see and acknowledge everyone. I try to acknowledge everyone in there where I can. I see Evolve D Hinano. Uh, Surfer Dude, good to see you, mate. We, we were chatting a little bit before. Uh, Jay Green, say, what? what see, Chumbo Fett, Nino Blue, uh, Benny Beats, Sven, Matt, 
Oh, Master Roddy, how are you, mate? Good to see you. Slider, always a pleasure. Death Bunny and um, everyone else uh, listening in the space. So I just want to quickly jump in there and just try and keep the conversation rolling, rolling because we're having a, a fantastic conversation. But yeah, Mask was next, and then we'll get to, to, to Key Collective 98. Sorry to keep you guys uh, guys waiting. It's, uh, it's all happening today. <laughs> Everyone's excited. Oh, no worries, no worries. Yeah, the, myself included. So basically, is I've been waiting for, for this to happen in Vivi. Because we didn't, I've always said, I want to buy a new comic. That's what I want to do. I am a yeah. fan of new modern comics. I like new stories. Uh, Jonathan Hickman is one of my favorite writers. Uh, you also have a bunch of other writers that I actually enjoy reading their stories. They, they write both for both Marvel and DC. And, and I always keep up. And when it, this reminds me, it's like going to a comic book store, right? When I go to a comic book store, I would buy, uh, let's say, the run of Amazing Spider-Man. Every single time. It does not matter if it was a key issue or not. I would get one copy. Now, if there was a spec book that came out from Captain Marvel, I would go ahead and buy three covers of that Captain Marvel book because then I know there's a spec. Never know what's going to happen. It's going to go up. It might go up in value. And then I can yep. tell right? The good, old rule, now, rule, rule, the good old rule of three. And here is almost the same thing for me now because the way that I'm basically going through this here is that there are going to be a lot of books that I'm not going to mint. I'm only going to buy the $3.99 because, again, it takes five weeks, four to five weeks or even longer for a book, a new book to show up on Marvel Unlimited. Mm -hmm. So we have to go to Amazon to buy it or we just go to a, a pirate website and download it. But yep. when we're buying it on Amazon, we're still paying $3.99 or $4.99. It goes in our library. And the same thing here. I, there's going to be issue four issue five issue six of let's say ultimate spider-man that may not be mm -hmm. uh, a spec i would buy the 399 i will not mint it but right. if the next book has a spec you i will mint it because then that book may have future value down the road exactly and 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 now like you no know, now we've got like with the new um the new uh comics uh uh, app, app now and website that's not the case anymore because now they're saying that they're going to release them like you know when they the the the, the physical prints get released so that's like once right, every right. Be same day right right It'll yeah exactly every day. Yeah. yeah so that 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 in itself is another massive game changer as well because like none of this like you no know, like you said waiting like you know five six weeks for the next issue you, you'll get it like you know the, the 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 next week exactly and then the other good part when you're talking about physical is that People that are getting these books on the same day digitally, they're going to want to get the physical version of it because we've seen it. We've seen people here uh, always try to match the digital and physical. If they feel they, there's going to be, they're going to be more aware of a Peach cover or a Scotty Young cover coming out now more than ever because before they had to do the homework for it. Now, hey, look, it's on Vivius right there. It just came out. Oh, shit, let me go to the comic book store and get that Scotty Young cover. So it's actually going to help each other for a while. And that just that, that that just shows how strong the relationship is with uh, with Marvel now too, because I'm I'm sure they probably signed some some contract separate um, for for this for this platform now, and they've been obviously building out for a little while now. But um, the fact that they're they're releasing the um, uh, digital copies when the physical launch is is a really good sign with uh, where mm. the partnership is. So. Yeah, definitely. Now, uh, key, key Collector, say, Kenobi, how are you, mate? So, do you, do you want to jump in on the conversation? So, you've been waiting very patiently with your hand up. Hey, yo. Hey, no, it's all good. What's up, Oz? Thank you for the space. Hey, Collector's not digital. What's good? Mass, Chris, sleeping. Anano, Notorious. Everybody in the space, man. What's, what's good? And happy Sunday. Uh, yeah, that... Not for me, man. Uh, I just wanted to go back to, uh, to the question, you know, how do we get people to stay? And uh, to me, that means, like, the people that, the people that I, I think or that I feel like I want to talk about are like comic collectors. How do we get people to continue to uh, how, how do we get the comic collecting space to continue to grow? And I I heard like the word easy. And to me, that has to go away. Like when I say that, I mean, I had to, you know, we all talk about paying our tuition and as a collector IRL, mm -hmm. I think I wish over and over and over, and I'm probably still paying my tuition and I'm still learning the game um, of collecting and it's fun. And we live in a, we live in an era now where, I mean, you got Netflix shows talking about like how much somebody made off of their collection. 
uh, and it's always like how much money, you know what I'm saying? Like there's 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 multiple uh uh what do you call it? like I don't want to say autobiography, but you know, stories out there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. everyone knows like what collecting does, like as far as like the the monetary value over the years, like if if you hold it and save it and whatnot, right? But can you imagine if we had social media back in the days when Pokemon first came out? Do you think kids or parents will be playing with their with their with their Pokemon cards and ruining their their Charizard and, and whatnot? And we see you know what I'm saying? So we live, we live in a we're living in a different time now where now people are like, what what's the quick flip? You know what I'm saying? Even more so in crypto, mm. like I said, somebody, you know, people are still selling their Bitcoin to get into this, to get into that to get into this it's almost like you know what i'm saying it's everybody it's still uneasy like no one no one is cemented in in their beliefs anymore you know what i'm saying um as far as like you know holding and and collecting or or even reading and this and that uh i can't say that I'm not um mask when you hold this space on monday and you 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 call out the books that that are good i can almost guarantee 100% that those are the books that everybody in the space that you're going to hold are going to go for. And then they're going to, you know, they're going to shoot for it. Why? Because to them, I mean, you're, to me, you're one of the more knowledgeable cats when it comes to content and, and everything like that. But what that's going to do is you're giving them an easy way out where it's like, oh man, I'm going to go for this now. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sell it because this is the hot book that Mass was talking about mm. rather and I'm, I'm just, I'm, that's what is, and that's what I want to get away from. You know what I'm saying? I, I want people to go in there and find out who their, who their favorite character is and, and what their favorite spec is and, and this and that. And I mean, yeah. And, and at the same time, I know your space is going to educate people, but by now I believe the people in the space understand, like even me, when I, when I came in, people thought I was crazy. Y'all I had, I mean, when I was collecting on VV, I had top-notch collectibles, bro, and I had no comics. And all of a sudden, like, I traded, <laughs> I was, I sold all my collectibles, and they were higher than comics at the time. I, I mean, I remember doing a trade with John, and then all of a sudden, comics shot up, and everybody's like, "How the fuck did you know that, Kenobi?" And I'm like, "I didn't. I'm just a fan of comics. You know hmm. what I'm saying?" Exactly. And so, and. And that's where it has to come from. And I think, like, and even more so now, like, we're, how do you bring in new people? I don't, the new people that we're talking about is the newer generation, which is the younger generation. And I have, I'm, I'm a personal trainer. And I have young clients, too. And I, I kid you not, like, I'm always talking about comics with them. I had one, I, they both come to my shows, uh, that because I, I, I do, I, I resell and whatnot. We talked mm -hmm. comic, talk collecting. One of them went to their first Comic Con. You know what I'm saying? The other one's still collecting, and you know. But the, at the same time, what we're what we're fighting against with these with the younger generation is they're everywhere. They got girlfriends. They got TV shows. They got this and that. You know. Yeah. So how are we gonna get them engaged into comics? You know what I'm saying? And when it comes to you know the digital collecting you know side, it's not. A, take take away the take please take away the boomers y'all like we can't hit them up like you know that there's that saying and I'm, I'm being like it can hold true nine times out of ten you can't teach an old dog new tricks like the older cats like they're stuck in their ways like but you know the ones that aren't for crypto and aren't for web 3 and all that stuff they're mm -hmm. not ever coming here they're they're you know you can't change their mind we have to focus on like the younger generation you know and mm -hmm. and hit up and, and 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 passing down that knowledge like like my kids 20 my, my son about to be 21 my daughter about to be 20 they can give oh, wow. a, they can give a freak less about comics i'll be real with you but mm -hmm. there's not one time where i don't say hey come into hey come in, uh come into uh, my room and i'll show them the comics you know what i'm saying i'll be hey yo this is this, this hey look you gotta wait till i die before you even try to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> so see this this is your inheritance do not touch it <laughs> yeah right like so and even just that just that little drip of knowledge like damn mm. and, and then you know not to mention like show your like 
look what's happening and I, I look what's happening in the heritage of auctions like there's an action comics number one on day four and it's already at four million dollars isn't it now there, there's still 30 days left before that comment goes to live auction you know what i'm saying like show them that like get get them excited and then they'll start they'll be like well we can't get the action comics duh but hey let's go to the comic store right now let's go pick up a modern you know a modern book and you read it and you know what i'm saying if you like it then and you believe that that's going to be the comic or whatever that mm -hmm. that's going to get you to to heritage you know what i'm saying like give yeah, me yeah. goals that's heritage, it like you get your shit in heritage that that's a goal bro like that should be like everybody's goal as a collector right like because at the end of the day, if if we're not gonna sell it, eventually somebody is. Yeah, you know exactly. Okay. You can't you can't take it with you. And by passing down that knowledge, at least at least you're you're not gonna be like that one story with the dude who had super uh uh the first, uh Superman's FA the 7.0 and his wife was gonna throw it away and the son didn't even care about it. they were they were just gonna throw his collection away. You know what I'm saying? You don't at, at least at least to the point where your collection doesn't go in the garbage. Yeah. So, so, so let, let me ask you this though. So, and maybe this just went over my head. Um, wh what do you mean by, uh, I, I think how you started it was, it shouldn't be easy. It shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be like, you should, it shouldn't be like, hey, this no. is a hot book, go get it. This is not a hot book, don't get it. You know what I'm saying? How, how am I, let them, let them figure it out. Like, yeah, you know, I was, I was about to say you 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 make you making it sound like more it it should be more more of a journey. Yeah, because at this point I'm be real. I'll be I'll be real with you. Everybody in the space knows who Miles is, knows who Spider Boy is, it knows who Peach is, knows and and guess what guys? They're they're gonna continue to have multiple comics out, and not every one of those comics are gonna be hitters. You know what I'm saying? But let the let the person getting into the getting mm. into the hot find that out where they're like, oh yeah. Ultimate Fallout 4, yeah, that's his FA of, of Miles or whatever, right? But what, you know what I'm saying? Like, are there any other books? And if there are, then, hey, I could cop those. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all of that. Like, the piece yeah. from Moko. Like, she, like, I, I see a lot of people saying, oh, man, I love it because the art. Bro, you know how many piece from Moko, like, covers there are IRL or even on even on the digital side now? Like, mm -hmm. how much, many is going to be popping off to the point where, it's not gonna it's gonna come a time where somebody's gonna say, Man, I can't keep up with this art. And mm -hmm. because it's just, you know, I mean, so you gotta pick and choose now. Let that yeah. so but if well, you're if you're if you're already telling people what to choose, whether it be subliminally or or direct, then I'm I don't know, man. It's just that's where the easy comes. That's where I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, let let them learn you know what i'm saying yeah like, yeah no i mean like I, I, i'm totally with you like you know you're more like on the like you know let, let, let it be a journey type thing like you no know, find find a character or a story that connects with yeah. you yeah, because you can lead a horse to water but you can't force them to drink but if you're over there helping leading them to the water and then getting the water for them is i don't know bro that's just me as as a collector and that's how i learned because look mm. dude there's just so much you know alpha out there so much info and i was quick to jump on this because that person said it and then i realized oh shit man nah it, it didn't go as, it didn't go as planned you know but mm -hmm. hey that's why i had to do yeah. my own research you know what i'm saying so or, or, uh, but or, or the other thing is like yeah sorry man. no i just want to say you know everybody keep on collecting collect the way you want to collect you know what i'm saying you know stay in your own lane but keep your peripherals open you know what i'm saying and you know if you see some on the side that you got to pick up and bring it to your own lane then so be it but uh i just i i love this man i i love i love digital comics in in a way because it's going i i hope in my opinion i hope it brings more collectors to you know not just digital but IRL as well and i'll leave it at this where my lcs the owner and me and him are tight bro he is so thankful of digital comics, bro, because it brought him so many customers, so many new customers, shall I say, because now they're looking for the 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 uh, IRL uh, copy to their digital. You mm. know what I'm saying? It's, it's beautiful, bro. But again, I'm not throwing shade or anything like that. I just like we have to in order for the space to thrive, we're, the foundation has to be true collectors, bro. I'm just being yeah, real. Yeah.
Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, well, I mean, just like, look, look, look at all the people we have in the chat with us right now. I mean, like, look at what what collectors are already doing. It's it's, it's bringing it's bringing us together from I'm I'm assuming from all over the world. I mean, like, I'm I'm seeing like you know a lot of returning faces, a few a, a few new faces I haven't seen before, and that's just what the what the power of collecting does. It just brings us all together to basically collect and connect, like we like like we say here in Web V. Like we all have like you know like a, a a common interest. Like it doesn't matter where you are, like in life. In, in in society whatever like you might be like in the up the upper tiers of like you know corporate executive all the way down to like you know someone who works at mcdonald's you could always like you know you can you can connect like you know on your love of spider-man or captain america or or or, or whatever whatever other um uh platform you're into and uh that's what we're all about here on this space <laughs> i love it love it absolutely love it mask um did did, did you have anything you wanted to add to that Thank you so much, man. I'm gonna step down. Thank you, Oz Collector. Wait, wait, Keith. I had a question for you. Okay, baby. I had a quick question for you. Number one is, I wish you didn't judge my show before you actually saw it, because no. I will be talking about 19 comics, and I will be as excited for all 19 comics. So Ooh. it might be the most boringest show you might even take be in, because you're gonna hear about the storylines for all 19 comics. No, I wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't knocking your show, but. Uh, I, I, I did, I did hear you verbatim say, and I'm not going to say, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, I will mention the keys, but I'm going to no, talk hey, about Nike Comics wait, as well. I'm but not then, knocking, bro. The other part it, I, ha I was asking you though. No, uh, I'm not. You said, oh my wait, hold on. You were saying that you want to show your son the heritage, was well, something so it's a heritage option, right? And then you want him to go and find a character that he thinks will reach those prices. Well, on the modern side. Is that collecting or is that investing? It's both. Mm. It's both going to collect and look at the end of the day, like no one can, t bro. Everything has a price at the end of the day, bro. Every but uh, as far as collecting, yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be doing both, bro. And 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 so I don't. And that's what we're that's what we're doing right now. Like, it, and if if you're if you're not if you if you're saying that what you're getting. Like if you're just doing it for fun, that's cool. But then again, like <laughs> I, it doesn't make sense. Mm. I don't know. like. Well, just just I, to chime I, in here, like, I, does it, do, do, does that sort of like you know depend on your definition of investing? Could it be like you know, like if if you're like you know whether you're thinking of like financial investing or is it like emotional investing? Because collecting is kind of like you know in, investing like emotionally as well. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everything we're talking about here is subjective. Mm. Yeah, that, and and what I want to say too, Matt. Again, I'll say it again. I'm not. I wasn't disrespecting your show, but I'm telling you right now. Like, I I can see. Like, there's there's always a difference when. I mean, if we're gonna talk about if we're gonna talk about Moon Knight, which is an awesome run, you know what I'm saying? And then we say, oh yeah, Moon Knight, the run's dope. And then you get to Daredevil, and it's like, oh yeah, Daredevil is is cool, but I need to read more. I mean, if you read between the lines, I'm gonna go shoot for Moon Knight. And not Daredevil because you know what I'm saying. So it's the rhetoric. But again, like I mean, I'm not knocking your show, bro. Even before I heard it, I'm just saying like those types of things are going to push people to certain books. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Well, would you not agree that that's part of the journey, though? Kind of like the trial and error. And if you screw up, you screw up. And if you take the wrong path, you take the wrong path. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I, I won't disagree with that. Also, mm -hmm. uh, collectors. Digital, so um but we'll see because it's going to i mean again i'm not i have no skin in the game so i can't talk about like what you guys are going to do in the market or whatever i can just say that for me personally i think that it will shoot people towards one direction more than the other i respect your opinion brother mm -hmm. yes sir yeah yeah totally like, like i said that, that that's what the space is all about like and having nice like and it did constructed de uh, constructed debates then we talk about things like you know and, th and this is good this is what this is what it's all about like you know, a, a nice healthy discussion what's uh what's chris saying here because chris has been quiet for a little bit what's your opinion on uh what's being said <laughs> yeah i've just been listening it's awesome this is what you want this you want debate at the mm. end of the day debate drives mm. interest and so this has been fantastic um I, I mean, I hear there's solid points across the whole thing. My my son, um, when we got into Vivi, 
couple of years ago, he was very engaged with me. Uh, he was what? Uh, he was about 16 and a half years old. Had never, he didn't even know I had a comic collection underneath the stairs until I got into Vivi, showed him these comics, and he's like, wow, I didn't even know you had these, Dad. And then, of course, we're going through some very nostalgic titles that I'm like, yeah, one day, you know, unless uh, unless we sell these, because I decide, you know, they've, they've hit a valuation, <laughs> sure, but, uh, you know, this could all be yours. What do you think? And he's like, well, where am I going to put those? <laughs> for, right? He didn't care about the physical comic. He kind of liked the idea of it. And he's like, well, let's open some of these up. And I'm like, no, no, no. Keep your hands yeah, off. That's, that's can't touch them, right? Those, yeah, you can't open them up. Air, that's not good for them. Well, what's the point of having them, he said. right? And so then we went upstairs and I opened up the app and I said, now here's what I'm doing to supplement that. And I'm really enjoying this. And we got into it together and suddenly he's asking me all these kinds of questions like, well, why do you like this character and not this one? And I like this cover. And so there is a definite blend between the investment side and the collecting side. No question. Right. But I, I just encouraged him to say, look, um, let's set you up with an account. He's part of his allowance. Right? We gave him whatever it was, you know, 20 gems a week, whatever. He went in and he he bought uh, he he participated in the drop when we launched Avengers uh, Avengers Four is is it Avengers Four the um, Captain America comes out of the ice right I think I it's think Avengers it Four yeah anyways it right yeah and of course he lands the secret right <laughs> it's like oh you and it bastard. was <laughs> <laughs> like there's a first time luck and he was thrilled like i he's I, I think he was more thrilled because he knew i was angry that i got like a random mint common and but he was he was immediately interested in this what happened a week later he goes on uh and says hey dad I, how come we don't have disney plus i don't know you know just another app so we end up downloading disney mm -hmm. plus he goes on to uh, finds the the whole cinematic universe timeline. So Disney actually laid this out. Here's the first show you watch. Yeah. And you go through whatever it is, 30, 40 hours of content to the last show. And we watched every one of those shows in that series. And he amassed a collection of about a hundred comics or whatever it was before, right? We had to merge the accounts and all that stuff yep. happened. Um, Right now he's he's approaching. He's in his twenties. He's got girlfriends, jobs. He's got yeah. university well, demands. He's getting into that faith. Yeah, and so he doesn't have the money to allocate to this, but he still likes watching the shows, the movies. He still says to me, "Dad, what'd you pick up lately?" We open up the app, and I'm like, "Check this out." There's a future collector. He's going to take a few years till he, you know, really comes back into this, but he's engaged in the product, and so my point earlier on about it being easy is that you have to make it easy to get people in that don't want to struggle with any kind of concerns, blockages or questions. Can I get in? Can I use my debit card, my credit card? Can I use crypto or fiat or OMI? Or if I want, if I understand that, yeah, we're kind of checking all those boxes, but I think to, um, to Keith's uh, to your point about not making it easy that now becomes what I see as the exciting part that keeps me engaged. The easy part is just buying things in the market because it's the lowest price, hoping it goes up mm. three gems, take your fee and flip it. It's easy to do that. It's hard to do the homework to find out why does a certain number matter? Why yeah. is one comic book more valuable in real life than, than what we see in this app? There's work involved. So to me, that's the part that I love the most. I, I love going into this thing and getting deep and I go into Marvel fandom and Marvel.com and I Google and I get into Wikipedia and I go into Disney and I look at the history and I try and find meaning in those numbers. And so to me, there's work involved. Where it's going to get really interesting, though, is if we can get people in easy and get them using the app, reading the books, right? It's a simple transition from what they're currently comfortable with. And now they're engaged. Now they're invested. How many people in this app, right, have put money into it and hope that one day you're going to be able to get that out with a return? Mm. But probably most of yep. us. 
So th that makes it very important for all of us to engage, use the app, share it with other people we know, talk about it, right? When when you're at the gym and you're training and you're talking about comic book, I absolutely love hearing that. That is fantastic. That's how you're going to excite a new generation of people to come into this. This is why I think Marvel tried to come out with so many new genres and age specific and gender specific. Like they are trying to find new yeah. audiences because they've done the Avengers. They've done Hulk, right? All of that stuff is now legacy yeah. for them. N nostalgia. They've got to recreate a lot of that. That's why these modern titles take the pre of an original story, maybe pay homage to it on the cover and, and create a new arc and a new character and a new storyline. And they do all these things with that premise of we need to continuously get new audiences into this mm. to keep this going. So that's hard for a brand. That's not easy. Mm. Right? And we've seen shows where, you know, like Miss Marvel, Echo, like some of these things didn't resonate yeah. because they tried too hard to appeal as opposed to just writing great content, great stories that will appeal to everybody. That's, again, that's a challenge for a brand to do all this mm. kind of stuff. And then you go back to what Sleep and said earlier, and imagine that that point when it hits, where Vivi says, we're ready to enter the Vivi-verse. Um, we want to start bringing people into this. That, again, is hard because you have to understand AR. You have to be... You know, at this point, the prediction is you'll have to invest in a headset. There's going to be work involved to enjoy that experience. Mm -hmm. But again, I look at it no differently as people had to learn what a website was. And I got to say, 20-something years in this space, I still have clients who built their websites in the early 90s and have not updated them and then can't understand why they never show up on a search engine. That still happens, mm. right? <laughs> because it's not... Mm. Yeah. It's a lot easy. It's, it's a hell of a lot easier than it was. But it's also the same thing to, I think, your point earlier, Josh. Right? It's not easy for a lot of people to buy a $10,000 flat screen TV when that product was new. But when you went to your friend's house and you saw how great a hockey game looked on that, and then you put your speaker system with it, and suddenly you had this in-home entertainment experience, that moment in time was defining for the theater audience Right. Well, why would I go to a movie theater when I can make some investment and fix up my own living That's room, it. my basement, and recreate this and watch any show I want as often as I want? We're at that point right now. We're at the point where even the living room is now going to be, how am I going to change this into this new virtual experience mm -hmm. where I can have my friends over and share it? Or you know what? If you've got a headset too, let's just agree to do like we're doing right now in this space. Everybody show up. And we talked about this last yeah. week. Remember, yeah. I was the uh, imagine the concept of heritage auction running a live auction in uh, an Avengers Tower yeah. that's hosted by Vivi, and they're all there administering the auction. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. The, right. And so you're doing all of these different things at the same time, right? You're onboarding. I mean, I'm a traditional guy, a physical guy. I'm 50 something, right? And I, I came into Vivi from crypto. I was trying to figure out how crypto worked a few years ago. And mm -hmm. I saw a video about these NFT things yep, that were same. coming. So again, how do you define me? Do you find define me as somebody that's a crypto enthusiast that came in to participate in Vivi? Because that's easy to say. Or do you find me as a physical collector who's had comic books since he was a teenager and was reinvigorated by the technology advancement that's brought us to this space? Right? Because you have to really understand what you're asking, who that audience is that you're trying to communicate that value point to. That's why I've always said Vivi has to and they're getting very quickly they're getting good at this now right at communicating different messages to different audiences in different ways and that's ultimately how you bring everybody in and then you give them a nice pleasant experience and you let them enjoy it in their own way and yeah my my son is going to be a miles morales fan there's no question about it he thinks that's the coolest nft in the app do we have one no <laughs> Right. And we debate and he's like, well, dad, you're this Peter Parker guy. And I said, yeah, but Peter Parker, don't forget. He got like, what, 60 years of of head start. 
That's it. Right. So there's a lot of people in the world that know Peter Parker that have no clue who Miles Morales is if they haven't seen in the Spider Verse and they haven't seen his comic. Right. Peter Parker is Spider Man for about 99% of the planet. So remember those things as you go through. Now, how do you take Peter Parker and reinvigorate him to the new audience again? Right. To me, that is hard. And I think Marvel's done a fantastic job with Miles. I, I, a, I watched the show on a plane going to a business trip. And uh, yeah, this is it was, it was fantastic. Now, it was animated. So there's a bit of a disadvantage to all the content that's been created, um, you know, for Peter's uh, timeline and whatnot. But it'll come. It's definitely going to come, right? But uh, so that's, that's, I see this as just, again, all these pivotal, uh, pivotal moments when the technology is finally caught up to the, the point where this is now reality and we're watching it happen in real time. We're not speculating anymore that Marvel is involved or Disney thinks this is cool or digital assets are real there for us. This is as real as me holding this coffee mug, right? yeah. but there's a lot of people that still don't trust digital as being real because we still have mainstream media who get paid on negativity. Mm -hmm. So they, they vastly outprint stories related to scams, crypto failures, fudding, Negativity, loss, yeah, demise, it sells. right? Uh, Lack of fidgetal. Right? Is the, yeah, is Lack the government going to yeah. come and find a way to <laughs> fidgetal? Yeah, right? that. Is the government going to come take all my Bitcoin again? Like they did, in, you know, what, was it the U.S. government came and, you know, confiscated gold mm. from people, right? So you still have people that remember going through that. And that's why I say it's uh, have fun at the end of the day, right? It Really enjoy it. And the, the stuff that I bought as a teenager that now has, you know, a hundred, some of them, the, one, two thousand X, like I, I was buying comic books for dollar fifty as a kid because I could afford them. Right. Now I've got a few titles that are, you know, worth thousands of dollars. I'm not doing anything. They're still hmm. sitting in there. I, I, I like knowing they're worth yeah, that. But it still um, has that, that, but, but that, again, that, it still has that like personal connection to you because they still hold value to you. Right. Like, if this didn't hold value to me, I mean, pick a number, right? whatever it is. Like, If my personal value, if you were going to consult my time and I said, oh, it's $500 an hour, I just spent two, three hours on a Sunday. Right? Mm. The reason I do this, the community is a value. Absolutely. For me. Same. The, the, yeah. The amount of fun, camaraderie, the, the people I've met, the stories that I see, the successes, the, the happiness right i i focus on the 99 percent of the the happy people in this space the one percent that are the futters yes i watch it i try and understand are they just kind of crapping on somebody's parade here because they want to capture some of the the notoriety mm -hmm. like are they seeing these things just because they they need to fulfill a goal i'm trying to get more followers or likes or i'm just really trying to disrupt or did i say something that was a credible argument Presented in a way that if I'm an operations director at a company and I see a consumer put something out on social media and they've got a legitimate beef and they say it in a nice professional way, that's like, look, I'm not trying to crap on you. I'm trying to help for everybody. I would read that. The FUD, the negativity stuff, people crying. Yeah, no, I don't have time for it. Right. But to me, that's another part of the value equation that I'm here because I'm having a great time. You know, and what's that worth? What's that worth? And so I've always said this. If everything went to zero and I lost my bags, of course I'd be upset. Who wouldn't, right? But I I don't think I would lose about 90% of the people I'm not mm. connected to. I think there'd be something else that we would find a way to keep uh, keep connected. So to me, I, I just look at it like it's easy to be positive. It's also easy to get caught up in the negativity side and all that. But uh, I don't know. Everyone keeps saying, right, all the tides raise all boats. I I agree with that. I hear that mm, all the time yep. now. But um, you know, collect what you like, and you can't go wrong. If you if you chase what, by the time someone has put something on a on a video or or shouted out something, it's almost too late, right? 
is by the time that you get in and go look for it, it's already pumped up. And then, you know, just wait a few days. If you see the market cycles, right, everything that pumps comes back down. Um, just pick your times mm. right? just and wait. But but also have an idea. Like, I don't really give a lot of financial advice because I'm not the, the smartest guy in the world either. Right? Got... But, but I do say, have a budget. And know what you're willing to spend on something. Know what you're willing to lose on something. And if it falls within that gap, hey, you know, sure, you can buy it in the market for like that, uh, the Wolverine in the flag, right? Yeah. I just, I love that cover. It's, fan, it's fantastic. Yeah. The, what's the gamble on it? Eight bucks? So I paid, I think, 12 in the market. So I paid $4 over retail, which is a chance at getting it because it's an exclusive. But that $4 premium was worth it to me to say, I got it, right? I'm not gambling that I'm going to get the common or whatever. That was the cover that I wanted. That's a good price point. I can afford it. If it goes to zero, I lose, I lose 12 bucks. But I own it. I'm not really worried that it goes to zero in evaluation. I have the cover that I wanted, right? And so... I just I just look at it like this with the like, that's so when I say easy, not not to unravel kind of this whole chat, right? But when I say easy, I just I look at all the things that are easy to enjoy, easy to participate, easy to get on board, um, easy to take advantage of the the thing that's been presented to us, and uh, that's how I how I like it. So, and the community loves you too, Chris. That's it. Oh, that's it. Us, we all love you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, um, uh, Kenobi. So you've, you've had your hand up very patiently for for ages, mate. Sorry, to keep you waiting. You had, had something to, um to chime in. Yeah, no doubt, man. Chris, that was beautiful, brother. Uh, that was beautiful. Yeah, I will I will say this, man. Uh, I started collecting about twenty three years ago, and I was collecting, you know, just sports cards, and you know, as far as like football, basketball, and baseball. Um, so I use I use the NBA as as my uh analogy or. Yeah, my analogy or whatever, as far as like evolution and, you know, just evolving. Right. Because back in the days, you guys remember, like, you know, when Michael Jordan was a rookie, you know, you had Patrick Ewing, you had all you had the Detroit Pistons. Yeah. You, you saw how they played. Like it was like straight like jailhouse rules, like clothesline getting pushed. You were not going to get a layup for free. Like you would, you know, there was fights and everything. Players not getting injected. Right. And. So it was it was th that was United States type rules. Right. And then you had, you know, you got like the Europeans are like, oh, man, I want to play with them, but they play too rough. <laughs> like be real like that. that yeah, yeah. So and so what what Dave, what what I uh, miss, I'll, I'll say Stern. I don't I, I think it's David Stern. And, you know, he was a commissioner. He was like, well, how do we bring people from different continents and, and countries into, you know what I'm saying? And make this, make this a global league. We have to, we have to get rid of something that that's scaring them away from the game. You know what I'm saying? And they evolved. And now what you see in the United States and the NBA is more like it, it, it almost mirrors the, the Euro league where it's nothing but jump shooting less. I mean, you're not seeing those types of fouls no more. And now more people are coming in. And so I bring it to this is where with digital, they are uh, with digital collecting and just collecting in, in general, going digital, the evolution of, of collecting is, is, is now digital. What does everybody have? What can you what can you hit everybody with now uh, with just a simple click? Everybody has a phone. Everybody has a computer. Mm -hmm. And so to like the evolution always matters. And and it doesn't mean that the, that people like still don't or people aren't getting fouled hard and then but it's just less right um so what i say this is that you uh digital yes i i think digital to me i i believe digital is the future i be i i do believe there'll be less printing uh in 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 the future as far as like irl but there 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 will still be printing you know what i'm saying just not as much you know what i'm saying uh and it's, it's, it's more cost effective for for marvel for dc and just you know toy companies etc right I think so. The evolution is what I see. Do I? And this is 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 not is not gonna die, bro. I, I don't see it dying. I don't see your bags going to going to zero, Chris. I, I really don't. Uh, so I just wanted to say that. And it's funny because I got lucky on one of my. I, I say it's luck, right? Because my my client, he's like he's he's only thirteen, mm -hmm. uh, but he shows. And one of the mystery bags he pulled was a Wonder Woman uh, foil cover. And when he got it. 
he he was like the first thing he said was she's hot and i was like okay <laughs> like, hey he was like she's hot right and i said hey bro she's more than hot bro uh if you read about her you'll find out she has superpowers and all this other stuff right but and i was like guess what bro there's <laughs> there's even hotter uh superheroes out hey bro i'm telling like so just like something like that where now like he's not just thinking, you know, one yeah. woman. I, I I put him on. I put him on, you know, Spider Gwen. I, hey, look, hey, all, hey, yeah. it doesn't matter, bro. But eventually, it's gonna lead to another superhero to another superhero. You feel me? But just those Is little it? nuggets. He did. He came back. He was like, dude, like yeah. that story. Oh, and you know, I'm not. I'm not even gonna hate, bro. Like I'm gonna. You got this conversation right now. Just opening my eyes because to me, like as far as like collecting and and just the platform in general. I'm about to shoot him. Uh, I'm about to uh, point him towards the the DC app uh, on Candy and the VV app where where he can see those comments, bro. I nice. Promise you, no lie, because this conversation and hearing Chris and hearing you guys talk, like that's dope, bro. Like so, it's opening up my eyes. And and to me, like I'm like my local comic shop, bro. I think these digital, I think digital collecting is going to bring in more people to the lcs is it or even to whatnot or ebay and i and you know it's just because people are going to want to match their digital comic with you know something real and one thing's for sure two things are certain that that feel that touch and i'll even get weird with it and say that smell that you get from from you know irl it's, yeah, yeah. It, it does it, it's different so but no, big ups to everybody up here in the panel, man. I got, I, I'm really gonna step down now, man. But I will continue to listen. You guys are rocking up here, man. And uh, yeah, man, let's see where this goes. Absolutely, let's yeah. go. <laughs> and just to add to that as well, like, did, did you say to your clients, say, if you think she's hot, did you know that there's a place? <laughs> so that there's a place called Themyscira, and it's yeah. full of women like this. <laughs> hey. Don't tell Fro. Don't tell Fro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Fro. Somebody's gonna say Electro. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and, to, and you know, I'm also to, I also talk to the parents. They're like, see, that's why you gotta hold your stuff, Coop. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, hey, let's go. Yeah. All right, y'all. Yeah. Well, the other one is, or the other one is, if if you like Wonder Woman, have you ever heard of Power Girl? <laughs> 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 yeah, hey, um, I was gonna say, Alex, I've got to. Uh, I got to step down too because I promised my daughter I'd take her for some uh, some daddy daughter driving lessons. So wish me well. Oh, God, good luck. But I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna keep listening. I told her three o'clock we could go, and so I'm a little bit late here. But uh, but those were some just to finish off before I uh, cut my mic out here. That, that was just fantastic to hear. I. It's it's kind of again it, right. It's why I'm so impassioned to hear those types of stories and comments. And yes, I I get asked all the time, like, don't you think this is going to hurt your your LCS? And I'm just like, well, I don't know, because I mean, I'm I'm back in there buying comic books. Uh, Denis will go in and he's like, hey, I know you were liking that Marvel Zombies. I, I've, I've talked mm. to my uh, my shop owner. He's he's got twenty coming in. Do you want me to pick you up a couple, right? I can't see how that's hurting them. I can't see how more people selling their physicals on eBay and now there's more people that understand why or what that comic means or represents. It's why more people like Disney Plus raised their rates, what, 20% and had like 4% of their audience cancel. Mm. Like we're vested in this now. Like people that, that are into it are really into it. And I got to say, it's exciting again. I, Anybody that didn't have the opportunity of growing up in the 80s, this is kind of getting there, right? It was like the best time on earth. Everything was fun. Everything was stories. And I'm feeling it. You know, I just, you know, if, if you have that, that feeling going on, like, man, this just feels good. It just feels good. And so it's why I, I, so impassioned i love hearing all these stories like i said i love the debate i love people having their own thoughts and ideas and sharing them and that's how companies grow they don't grow in isolation they don't grow when people are silent they don't grow when no one is enthused and i'll say something about this community right like there's some enthusiasm going on here that 
I work with a lot of companies. I work with a lot of brands. I do marketing all day long. I'm trying to get companies customers. I'm trying to help them figure out how to grow. The number of times in the past year that I have told them to come in and watch Vivi, when they don't even they're not comic book people, they're not collectors, they're nothing to do with this space. I'm like, watch what's going on there. If you want to learn how to build a brand and an audience that is engaged and mm-hmm. valued and trust you, this is a model of success. So we're all, we're all seeing it. We're all participating in it. And we're all helping this grow by this type of debate and conversation. So I, I just say keep it going. Um, and uh, thanks to everybody for, you know, for just sharing this time and the space. And those of you that have read my blog, I appreciate it too. I, I, like I always say, I'm not a writer. I just... I put on paper what we have these types of chats about because I think there's those of us that still read as opposed to always watching videos and stuff. And that's why I do that. So thanks again. And uh, Alex, great space today. I don't know. Really, really well done. So. Yeah, no, thank you, Chris. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to come and come and speak with us in the space. It's always a pleasure to have you. And, um, and, and, like, we, and like we said sure. before, like, you know, you're, you're, you're an amazing member of the community and uh, yeah, you're definitely a, a, a pivotal voice in the in, in the space. So um, in, 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 Thank you, my enjoy friend. the rest of your day. <laughs> Good luck and um, wear wear a you helmet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Make sure, make sure to, Double seat belts and sure my goalie and pads and two seat. That's belts. it. That's it. That's right. Give the old pint. Okay. Yeah, no worries, mate. Take care. Have a good one. Um, <laughs> All right. Talk to you, unfortunately, guys, I got to start wrapping up the space soon as well because I got my my son upstairs uh wanting to know where Daddy is, but um. I've got about 10, 10 minutes left in me before I go start closing things up. Um, but yeah, I just want to say if if anybody did want to come up to the stage and um and say anything, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, Mask, sorry, sorry, mate, oh, you you still got your hand up. So um, yeah, if there's anything you want to want to chime with before I start uh, having to wrap things up. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say real quick. I mean, it's uh, digital is not the reason comic book stores are suffering, or it's the diff, or it's what's going to really hurt it. They're kind of like already cannibalizing each other. The comic mm-hmm. book stores are. I mean, I have four places that I can buy comics, right? I can buy from my comic book store, but it's an hour away. Mm-hmm. I can buy from this comic book store that gives me 20% off on new comics on on Tuesday night on their Facebook site. Okay. They're located in Buffalo. And I can buy new comics from this guy <laughs> these, that sells comics with his son from his house, but he has the, the Penguin house and he has all these distributors that sends him the comics because anybody can be a comic book store. You don't need to have a brick and mortar to be a comic book store anymore. No, no, you, and then you I just need an address. Another, yeah, you just need an address. Mm. And then no. I have another guy, him and his partner, they sell from their house as well. And they sell new books two for one. So when Ultimate Spider-Man okay. number one came out, they were sending them two for $5. Oh, uh, okay. This is the problem that's going on with comic book stores because as rent continues to increase in locations, and you're seeing more and more comic book stores adapting to selling Funko Pops, selling toys, selling action figures, mm-hmm. because it's, and you see the comics all the way in the back. I'm not saying all comic book stores are like that. It depends where you're located. But the ones I see in my area, in the Florida area, we're seeing the franchise stores become more of a toy store than a comic book store. Mm. But wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you argue that that's exactly because of the digital side no like the comics are getting pushed to the back because of the digital side more people are going online margins are are, are, are cheaper online like if you're running a store you got to hold inventory right so costs are going to be well, higher like here's the thing it's bad okay so it's a combination of things right and a lot of it with the, the publishers themselves it's bad writing uh higher cost for the comics 4.99 five you got comics that come out at 9.99 for a one-shot cover yeah, and right. the comic book stores have already already expressed concerns with uh, the publishers. I see two e two they attacked the publishers. Well, I say attack, but they had a, a roundtable with all the complaints, and they and, and they said, "Look, you you guys, the stories are bad. You're charging more money. Yeah, it, it's a combination of things that's really hurting them. That's really nothing to do with digital. It's just it, it, look, they're not really putting a lot of effort. Just the quality, <laughs> just the quality's not there anymore. Right now you have this new ultimate storyline and people are excited about it. It's you got four prints, third prints, third prints everywhere. Yep. You know, it's you, Jonathan Hickman is on the title. So they mm-hmm. got one of the best writers out there and just people have been eating it up. So that has been good. 
the story is good. But keep in mind, there's just if the profits are the same and your rent keeps going up, there's a problem there, right? Mm. <laughs> it's just kind of hard to keep the store open. Yeah, right. Ah, very interesting. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you noticed, uh, Alex. Thanks for sharing that, by the way, Mask. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. thank thank you, Mask. Um, I uh, I, I uh, let Jay Green up. So. Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Jay, how are you? Hey, I'm great. How are you guys doing? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, like I said, so yeah, I've got, I've, I, I do have to start wrapping up the space soon, mate. But yeah, um, absolutely. If, if, if you want to chime in, go for it. Yeah, I just want to make a quick point. And most people have already made them. And first, thanks for these uh, these Sunday spaces, man. They're really uh, really good quality stuff. So I appreciate them. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, and my point's kind of been made by uh, in in general, but you know, we, we all comic book collectors are always super passionate, right? We love the comics. We love the characters. We love making sure we, we, we stay in contact with our characters that we love and, and, and non-comic book characters really, you know, there's a lot of people out there that love all the movies and still mm -hmm. love the characters, but they don't get into the collecting, right? They love the, the cartoons maybe and, and the movies and stuff or the video games, but there's a barrier. Like why aren't, you know, more people reading comic books and they don't always do so well. And I think it's what kind of Mass touched on. It's a it's a barrier to introduction. Like a lot of people that are are into them had either a parent or a brother or a friend that brought him into the comic book store. That's maybe inconvenient to get to, and then you got to go back every month. And then if you just walk in there on your own, because hey, I really like the Spider Man movies. Let me look. It's kind of can be a little overwhelming and not really maybe super welcoming. So I, I'm super super excited about what what's happening with this Marvel is because I think it breaks down that barrier of introduction and it's already broken down the other, you know, things that aren't great about comic collecting, like storing them um, and trying to resell them and it simplified all that. And now by knocking down this barrier of introduction, now you just show somebody and in 30 seconds, click, click, boom, now you're a comic book collector. I think we're going to see all these people that really love the characters, love the movies, love the video games. Now they have this opportunity to say, wow, Comic book collecting is easy. It's convenient. Um, I'm, I'm stoked. So I think it's this is has the potential to exponentially increase the amount of comic book collectors that exist. It's something we've never, you know, <laughs> we've never seen before. And mm. and I, you know, I, I I don't think that people are realizing the full impact because that's that's what keeps people away. People, I mean, we watch it with the, our our friends on, you know, spaces and everything when we hear them talking about these people that have never collected comic books before. Now we hear them getting into it and everything, and it's kind of exciting hearing them, uh, kind of what Kenobi was saying, how to see him go through that process of it, uh, yeah. that learning curve, you know, and you hear him talking about things that you know might be a mistake, but it's kind of fun just hearing him get excited about things. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm stoked, man. I'm super excited. I, I, I think I think another part about that, though, is because you, you, you had mentioned about the, the barriers to uh, introduction and stuff like that. I, I think it's also just it's a mix of, of the times changing, right? Because back when comic books were at their peak with, with um, IRL prints and everything like that, um, there were way less distractions. I mean, it, somebody already said it on this call. I mean, we, we got phone, everybody has a phone at their fingertips and how many yeah. people can, you know, search movies and different types of books and videos on YouTube and stuff like that. So, I, I, I mean, I myself, um, I don't come from the comic book side. I was born late 90s. I... You know, when it when it comes to Marvel and DC, I was always into the movies. I was aware yeah. of the comics, never got into them, right? Um, but now that they're kind of well, more platforms are are, are adopting the digital side, and especially VV and introducing this whole new platform. It's it's exactly what what um Jay Green was just saying. Like, it's going to make it easier for people to um, it, it's going to bridge the gap, yeah. right? But again, that's only to the people who know about them. So that's a lot different than um, making people who know nothing about digital comic books or NFTs or digital collectibles aware of this stuff and then make them interested as well. That's much harder when you have a sea of like distractions, yeah, other distractions. Yeah, because that's a because that's one of the biggest problems these days is like everyone's trying to fight for everyone's attention because like attention is basically like the the number one like you know currency these days or commodity. Dude, it's brutal. Like. My like my mom, my mom sitting <laughs> on, the, on, the, on, the, on the on the couch just swiping TikTok for hours. It's yeah, brutal. It's brutal, man. Oh man, I, it, 
I've I've seen it myself. Like, I just like know with like work, like work work friends and just just actually tell you what I, I was in McDonald's today with my kids. Like you know just just getting like you know like you know a McFlurry or whatever. And the amount of people I could see just looking around, like you know, I just look around at all the tables. Everyone's got their heads in their phones and just swiping like TikTok and and Instagram and whatever. I'm just like, yep, this is where we're heading. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that yeah, and then that brings us all the way back to that initial comment about oh, if you introduce the Apple Vision Pro, it's like okay, it's going to make it cool for a little bit, and then how many of those people who find it cool, their attention spans are going to drop and then want the next coolest thing, right? Exactly. So the next... we need to introduce we need to introduce more fun ways of being able to read these comments, yeah. but then keep the momentum going. Yeah, keep the engagement um, there. Yeah. Nah, very cool. Mask. Yeah, Mask, you, you you had something you want to add? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, and even to touch upon the fact, you know, what comic book stories are going up against. Right now, it's six thirty Eastern time where I'm at. Mm -hmm. uh, all the comic book stories here are closed. But if you go to whatnot, you have over fifty shows currently going on. Majority have less than ten people. Fine, the bigger ones have fifty, seventy, right? The bigger known ones. And then there's going to be another two hundred plus shows between six thirty and midnight. For the next six hours, so that that's the, that's really the competition that they're going against. And I used to be a whatnot seller when it first started selling comics in twenty twenty at the end of twenty twenty one. So I stopped I stopped selling because it was just it, everybody became a seller. I had people that were buying comics from me, and yeah. three months later selling those same comics. Yeah, right. So it just got like too diluted. Oh God, yeah, it, and and you see that. Then you see other sellers. They used to come to me and goes, "Hey." If you feel that you sold that book too low, just cancel the sale and then we'll try again next time. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's, yeah, there's a lot of things that goes on with that. But again, this is the competition that the LCLs have. If the, anybody can sell comics now. Everybody's a competitor. Mm, especially like a big like Hunger Games <laughs> situation now. Yeah, and then new comics is just, it, there's really low profits when it comes to new comics. Compared to uh, stuff that's uh, on stock. And then the other part is, too, in South Florida, we used to run into collections from old comic book stores that closed down. Because keep in mind, we, you, half of comic book stores from the 90s closed down. And what people did is they didn't get rid of the comics. We were finding them in storage houses. Mm. People would have who, somebody who owned a comic book store somewhere in Miami. They put all those comics in storage, and then all of a sudden, they started either selling on Walmart, selling on eBay, especially in 2021 when the prices were going up on everything. And yep. people were buying those collections as well, so they can sell them on whatnot and eBay and so forth. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, all, all, all these comic books just came out of nowhere and just like basically saturated the market. Oh my God. Everybody says, oh, yeah, it's a warehouse find. Mm. <laughs> That's what they call it. They found it in a warehouse. Yeah. Done like a whole, like, a, what's it, a storage wars. Yep. Yeah, cool. All right, guys. Well, unfortunately, I got to start wrapping up the space because I got my my son upstairs wondering where I am. But um, again, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's uh, taking the time out of the busy day to come and come and chill with us in the space. A uh, big thank you to uh, to Mars, to Chris, uh, to to Jay Green, to Collector uh, Key Collector ninety eight for coming up and speaking with us. So it's been a been an amazing conversation and um, great great topics discussed um the, this evening. Big thank you to um to Josh as well, our Collectors Gone Digital, for being the co host. And um, normally um, I would do a big shout out. Actually, I'll just do a quick shout out because I've, I still have a little bit of time left. Um, I want to just do a big, uh, big, big shout out to the Webby Collective, which is uh, what, which is uh, what these uh, Webby uh, spaces are brought to you by. And it's more or less just a, it's a collector's group slash collector's space where basically we just wanted to create a, and an, a, basically create a, a space where we could all just come together, uh, collect and connect, and they're just a. Uh, geek out um and just uh share our love of uh collecting uh digital physical marvel dc um all all that good fun stuff and um that's that's what these spaces are all about just um bringing everybody together and just uh sharing our collecting journey which is uh what, more or less what we've been doing here today and um now vivi has just uh just made that that journey a hell of a lot more interesting uh but yeah um and just um so yeah, normally I do a big, a big shout out to all our, our, um, our members, uh, uh, individual projects. But unfortunately, I, I do have my my son um, crying his his lungs out, so I do need to run. Uh, but Josh, um, you wanna you wanna leave us with anything before we go? 
Yeah, I'll make this super short because of what you just said there. Yeah, but, go on. Uh, as for Chris J. Green Mask, uh, thanks for hopping up. Um, I, I want to invite you guys on this show next week because I think there, there is still a lot to, dis- uh, to discuss around this topic. And uh, I think one interesting one is uh, what Marvel could potentially do with Marvel Unlimited if VV Comics works out really well for them. So um, feel free to hop by next week. Next week. Oh, actually, maybe not next week because actually one thing I will shout out is uh, next week is we are actually going to be doing our WebB Live, which is uh, more or less what we're doing right now, but it's going to be um, in YouTube uh, live format. So um, it's basically where, where the WebB Collective sort of comes together once every every month or so. And um, we just sort of come together and just uh, basically do what we're doing right now. Just uh, share our love of collecting. We share our, our collections. Um, we do a little bit of fun stuff as well. Do a little bit of um, taste testing. Do a few over like reaction videos. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's going to be happening next next Sunday um, at about this time um, when when this uh, space started, which was it will be about eight eight o'clock uh, UK time, be one o'clock um, Pacific Standard Time, and three three no sorry uh, four in the afternoon um, uh, Eastern Standard Time. But um, all the information will be on on the X basis, so stay tuned for that. And um, also as well, um, if you're just jumping into this this space now and uh, you missed all the awesome conversation we had beforehand, fear not because uh, the replay will be available on the Worthy Collective's YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, so you'll be able to find the uh, replay there. All right, guys. Unfortunately, um, I do need to go. But um, again, big thank you for everybody who's uh, stuck with us. Big thank you to everyone who's spoken. Uh, big thank you to uh, Collectors Gone Digital for um, co-hosting with me. And um, yeah, I've been your host, uh, Osman Collect 63 um, take care, everybody. Have a good one, and uh, we'll talk more soon.